Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought all in all that I would talk about, of course, the very interesting fight and matchup that recently ended up happening between that of Tim Zhu and Tony Harrison. And of course, overall, for those of you that did not end up hearing about the results, Mr. Tim Zhu, just like I had predicted, did end up winning that of the fight. And of course, not only did he end up winning the fight, he ended up stopping Tony Harrison, ironically, in round nine, which has been the round that just seems overall to be very, very unlucky for that of Tony Harrison, whether it's just that he wears down perfectly at around that round, or maybe the pressure is just too much for him, maybe a combination of both. But like I said, overall in my fight prediction, I thought that the pressure was going to be too much overall for that of Tony Harrison, and there is a multitude of reasons why I picked Tim Zhu in this fight. And I'm going to be breaking down a multitude of things in this video, so it may be a little bit longer for that of my fight reviews. It's probably going to be more around 20 to 25 minutes, because I'm going to be explaining a little bit more things in depth, at least from my perspective. But the reason why I mainly picked Tim Zhu in this fight, like I said, was because he was going to be the undefeated fighter of the two when it came down to it. And if we're just really going to be real about Tony Harrison, and once again, I'm known for being a very blunt and harsh critic and I'm not a guy on the know that ever tries to be rude or mean or uh, you know aggressive in any sort when it comes down to when it comes to my breakdowns for sure but if we're just going to give the cold harsh reality on Mr. Tony Harrison he's just never really been that guy it just is what it is and Tony Harrison is like one of those athletes overall that they had one very great moment in their career but the majority of their career is pretty much remembered for never really living up to the hype that they were supposed to live up to. You know, well, whether you talk about overall certain other athletes, maybe like that of a Cam Newton for the Carolina Panthers. For those of you that don't remember uh, what I stated, I was a Carolina Panthers fan for a very long time, and I still follow them. Uh, and I was a very big supporter of Cam Newton, a quarterback that I still think had great value. And of course, is able to do some great things in the NFL, but also in certain eras or certain areas did underachieve. And of course, a lot of people love to make excuses for him and say, oh, no, oh, he never had any weapons. But a big part of the truth of why Cam Newton also never won shit was because he was never meant to win shit. It just is what it is because he really was not a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Another example would be that of Isaiah Thomas within that of NBA basketball. And when I say Isaiah Thomas, I'm of course not talking about the Detroit Bad Boy Pistons, Isaiah Thomas, all the way back in the 80s and 90s. I'm talking about overall that little that little guy, overall Danny DeVito in black form, <laughs> that of the Boston Celtics. And of course, I'm just messing around, but we all know who I'm talking about. The little man overall who played for the Boston Celtics had one great season and then pretty much disappeared after that. The truth is about Tony Harrison is that he's just like them. He's just like some of those other athletes that you see. You know, they do certain great things in their career, but they're not really all time great for their profession. And Tony Harrison has always been a guy that has always shown us that he's usually going to fail in that of the biggest moments. He doesn't have the skill set, in my opinion, to be that all time great of a fighter. In my opinion, his head movement has never been that great. His defense has always been a little bit too leaky. And if we're also going to go there, he just has way too much anxiety. He puts way too much pressure on his shoulders. There's been a multitude of times where Tony Harrison, he's been leading in a fight, completely outboxing the opponent, whether it be that one overall guy that uh, Demetrius Bubu Andre knocked out, the first guy that ended up defeating Tony Harrison. He was completely outboxing the guy. But then the guy hit him with a good shot, and he pretty much went down. He wasn't able to recover. you know. And then also in another fight against that of Jarrett Hurd, he just places a lot of pressure on his shoulders, in my opinion, and the anxiety, it just gets way too much for him. And you just see certain fighters or you see certain athletes that are like that. In terms of football, I've seen it with that of Kirk Cousins and I've seen it with that of Matt Ryan. Whenever they had a big lead or whenever they knew that they were going up against another great quarterback, usually they couldn't pull it off. That's just how they were, you know, when it came down to it. When you talk about a fighter like that, Zab Judah and Adrian Broner were two fighters like that. More, more, more likely Zab Judah. Because Zab Judah, in my opinion, he had the skill set when it came down to, to actually compete with some of those other fighters. Not necessarily an A-plus skill set, but he had decent speed. He had decent power. Zab Judah actually was one of the more talented athletes. He was one of the greater athletes in all of boxing, really, within the past, I don't know how many years. But because, on top of that, he didn't have the boxing IQ, and he would always break down overall and later on, <laughs> later on rounds in terms of fights, 
you know, he was never remembered as an all-time great fighter. He was a decently great fighter, but he was never an all-time great fighter. Or I don't even know if I can say decently great fighter, but I believe he was a two-way division champion. So it is what it is. Tony Harrison is very similar. Tony Harrison overall has always shown us that usually when it comes to rising to the occasion that he's usually not going to rise to the occasion. But the interesting thing once again with this fight was that was Tim Zhu going to rise to the occasion? Because this hands down was supposed to be the biggest test of Tim Zhu's career. And when I took a look at it all in all, I think I predicted Tim Zhu to win this fight by unanimous decision. And the reason all in all why I did not predict him to knock him out, at least specifically, was because I looked at the Terrell Gachet fight and I seen that he did not stop Terrell Gachet. So I said, okay, you know, maybe Tim Zhu is not necessarily 100% a knockout artist. But at the same time, I also took a look at Terrell Gachet's record and I said, okay, you know what? No one has stopped him before. And Terrell Gachet has fought a multitude of fighters like Lara and some of these other guys, some decent guys that actually are decent power punches and he's never been stopped. So either one or two things is happening here. Maybe Tim Zhu, he's just not what I would call, you know, obviously he's got power and obviously he's got great pressure, but maybe he's not 100% a quote unquote knockout artist or two, Terrell Gachet is just really tough as rocks. And it turns out that the second option overall tended to be more of the truth. But the reason why I also didn't pick Tony Harrison to win this fight, not only because he's a guy all in all that once again has always usually failed in his biggest fights in the past. Overall, he also showed me in his past couple of fights, in my opinion, that he didn't really even look as good as what he was before the Jamel Charlo fights. And there are just certain fighters that it ends up happening that way. When they end up losing possibly the biggest fight of their career or they end up losing a very big fight in their career, they're never personally the same after that. Not mentally, overall, not physically, nowhere. And, and the reason why that is is because certain fighters, they take a look overall when they get big wins or when they're undefeated. They say, you know, overall, well, I got this. You know, my, my technique has worked for me so far. But then when they finally get in that fight and that fighter ends up kicking their ass or they end up beating them, they start second guessing themselves. They start saying, well, what was it overall that failed before? Because this worked the previous 30 or 40 something times. Why was it that I failed this time? And that's why certain fighters, when they end up losing their first fight or they end up losing the biggest fight in their careers, they really lose confidence because Tony Harrison overall, he was a guy that, of course, had already been previously beaten. But when he beat Jamel Charlo that first fight, there probably was a part of him that said, oh, I'm turning over a new leaf. You know, this is a new point in my career. But then when he lost that second Jamel Charlo fight, then it pretty much all came crashing down again. And Tony Harrison said, nah, I still got certain things to improve on, or maybe I'm not as good as what I thought I was. And then every fight that I seen after that, even against Sergio Garcia, and I believe against Padilla or whatever the hell that one other Latin fighter's name was, he just looked way too hittable to me. He was even taking certain shots and taking certain exchanges in certain fights that I had not seen him take before. And more than likely, you know, maybe maybe a corner change happened. I'm not necessarily sure. But Tony Harrison didn't even look as good as what he did in his previous fights before he ended up losing to Jamel Charlo. That was another big reason why I picked Tim Zhu to win the fight because, once again, when I analyze fights, I take a look at a multitude of fights. I don't just take a look at one fight and say, well, this is where he looks at his worst. You know, so this is exactly what's going to happen. When you analyze a fight... You have to take a look once again at a multitude of their fights and see, okay, these are all the possible scenarios that might happen. And Tony Harrison, once again, in my opinion, he just was not going to handle the pressure well. And pretty much what I had predicted came to fruition. As for Tim Zhu, it was going to be very interesting once again to see how he handled this because overall he does have a very high guard and sometimes that can be a positive, sometimes that can be a negative depending on the positioning and how well you parry and counter punches. And let me say this. Uh, Tim Zhu did prove to me that he had a decent amount of better boxing skill than what I once even originally thought. He parried and countered very well in this fight. The only thing that I would say that I necessarily didn't like about his performance is that I thought he could have even been more dominant in the fight. I think that I gave Tony Harrison maybe two rounds in the fight. If you were being super duper generous, you maybe could have gave him a third round. But the first half of the fight especially, I thought that Tim Zhu dominated. I thought that Tony Harrison clearly won the first round because Tim Zhu really didn't have a bunch of reactions. And I thought overall that he was staring at him way too much and not throwing. But every round after that, I thought that Tim Zhu pretty much had dominated. And if we're also uh, going to talk about, in my opinion, what Tony Harrison did wrong, Tony Harrison, in my opinion, just completely fought the wrong fight. But maybe he fought the fight that he thought that he needed to because he was just getting hit way too often. 
what Tony Harrison was supposed to do in this fight was that he was supposed to fight exactly how he fought Jamel Charlo. Moving overall in circles, using lateral movement, you know, keeping your hands up, using that stiff jab, you know, throw that right hand down the pipe. Don't be afraid overall to show him and say, no, you're not just going to bully me the whole entire night. You're not just going to pressure me. And Caleb Plant is also going to be faced with a very similar situation coming this March 25th. That's why that's also going to be a very interesting fight because we're going to see in that fight where Caleb Plant truly is and if he has a little bit more dog in him than what I think overall that he does, at least in terms of facing a fighter like that because he didn't show me it against Canelo Alvarez. But we'll see it overall what ends up happening there. But anyways, what Tony Harrison was supposed to do was that he was supposed to use his superior height, his superior reach, he was supposed to box around him. He was supposed to use his superior jab. And he was supposed to say, you know what, Tim Zhu? I'm not going to let you trap me in the corners. I'm not going to let you trap me up against the ropes. I'm going to jab you all night long. And I'm going to give you hell all night long. And every time that you try to come in on me, either a hard right to the body or a hard right hand right down the pipe is going to happen. Or I'm going to throw a hell of a counter. You know, I'm going to do some body work. I'm overall going to hit you with this jab. I'm going to be elusive. You know, I'm going to use a great amount of lateral movement. I'm going to make sure once again that you're not going to hit me or that you're not overall going to pressure me and bully me throughout the whole entire fight. And I'm going to be willing to stand my ground or at least sit down on my punches. And did Tony Harrison do any of that? <laughs> once again, he showed a great amount of heart. Tony Harrison always shows a great amount of heart. But once again, the anxiety issues, they just get to him way too much. And on top of that, he just doesn't have super great boxing IQ. In my opinion, he fought the wrong fight in this fight. You had, I believe, about a four or five inch reach advantage over him. Now, if I'm wrong, someone correct me. Maybe it was only three inches. Maybe that was another fight. I can't remember. But you were the lengthier dude. You have decent power uh, overall when it came down to it. You were supposed to be the guy in the middle and on the outside of the ring trying to outbox him. There was even certain moments where Tim Zhu was able to outbox Tony Harrison, which if you're in Tony Harrison's corner, that can't happen. Tim Zhu is not supposed to be out jabbing you. He's not supposed to be over landing repeated right hands and trapping you up against the ropes. Tony Harrison, he just let Tim Zhu bully him. And with the amount of times that I've seen him get hit even more in his most previous fights, because it's very clear in my opinion that he's mentally affected even more by that Jamil Charlo rematch loss when it came down to it. Uh, you know, I think all in all that that was the main reason why I picked Tim Zhu. And once again, like I said, it pretty much came to fruition. So when it came down to it all in all, good on Tim Zhu for winning this fight. Once again, I thought he could have been even more dominant in the fight. I thought all in all that he was very laxed with the body attack in the first half of the fight. It mainly seemed like he was head hunting. And if he does face Jamel Charlo, he's going to have to fix that. Because Jamel Charlo, he's going to have more confidence. He's going to have more power. He's going to have a better chin than what Tony Harrison did. And Tim Zhu, all in all, when it came down to it, what I'll say is this. Before, I really did not give him the greatest of chances over that of Jamel Charlo. I think I gave him maybe about a 10% chance. But in this fight, what I'll give him credit for is this. He showed me certain skill set, or a, a, a certain skill set, excuse me, in this fight, all in all, that I really didn't know that he had. Or that I didn't expect overall to be as good as what it was. Now, his feet are still a little bit clunky. And he still doesn't have the best defense against a jab. And he's still a little bit hittable. But his high guard was pretty effective in this fight. He parried and he slipped and he rolled with punches very, very well. He countered very decently well. His jab was very, very good in the fight. When it came down to it, he varied it very decently well. And his right cross was very decent. The only thing, like I said, is that, in my opinion, he could have been even more dominant in the fight with the body attack. He stopped Tony Harrison in the ninth round. He probably could have stopped him within about six rounds had he launched in a body had he launched a body attack, excuse me, overall from that around one. He probably could have had him stop within about six rounds. You know, because Tony overall, once again, he's always known to fade away in that of the fight. But, you know, Tim Zhu overall good on him. I thought that his high guard was very good. I thought that his defense was relatively good. Of course, there's still certain faults in there. Uh, but overall, once again, no one is expecting him to be that of Canelo Alvarez. So once again, I gave him a decent amount of credit, especially for this supposedly being the biggest test of his career so far. So I give Tim Zhu once again a hell of a lot of credit. Let me also state this overall when it comes down to it because I see a certain amount of people always analyzing certain things or I've seen a lot of people, especially when they talk about this fight. And this is why I like to review certain channels like that of Adante's Box Nation or some of these other guys. Because a lot of people in the comment section, when I take a look at it, especially on some of these channels, 
They always say the same shit. They always are like, oh, well, Tony, man, you know, I'm picking him to win this fight because he's got to win this fight for us. Win this overall for black American fighters and all this other shit. Win this for us, Tony. And they end up picking Tony, probably not because they logically think he's going to win, but because they let their emotions get into it. And listen, it's great overall to root for your own kind. It's great overall to root for whoever you want to root for. That's great. Uh, but like I said, when you're an objective um, and in, in a logical analyzer, you can't let your emotions get in the way. And if you're going overall to the point to where you like, you know, win this fight for us and all sort of stuff, then you can't be called an objective and logical analyzer. Because what you already showed me is that I already know your motivation overall for who you're picking in this fight and that you're basically already clouded with your judgment. It just is what it is. And certain people, they always ask me, you know, overall. And well, before I talk about that, there was this one person, I believe in, in the comment section when I was talking about this fight, I believe about a week ago with Tony Harrison. Of course, he was talking a lot of shit and he was saying, oh, well, Tim Zhu, I got to see how he reacts and all sort of shit. And <laughs> pretty much what my reaction was is that, dude, I got to see how you react. Because at the end of the day, Tim Zhu is the undefeated fighter here. No, he really hasn't had the best of resumes, but Tony, like I said, he sure was talking a hell of a lot for a fighter that had been knocked out three damn times in his career. It just is what it is. So like I said, overall, I need to see how he reacts. And like I said, pretty much every time, and this is just the harsh truth of it, every time Tony Harrison has been asked to answer the bell, he never could. It just is what it is. He almost never could. He did in the first fight against Jamel Charlo. Every other time he failed. Every other time. It just is what it is. And I had this one person overall comment in my comment section on that video. And he said overall, oh, well, I can't wait to, you know, come back overall after the fight because this is a hate video and all sort of bullshit, uh, you know. And once again, I always tell people this because certain people, they ask me, well, where does your allegiance lie? You know, where does your loyalties lie? I don't have any particular loyalties to these fighters. Uh, I am not a fan of any of these fighters. Every prediction and analyzation that I make is based off of the most logical and objective conclusion that I can come to. That doesn't mean that I'm going to be right all the time or 24-7, but there's a reason overall why my boxing prediction record is about 99.99999% correct. And once again, overall, I ended up getting this fight correct because I was correct in some of my assertions. It just is what it is. Once again, I watched the most recent fights with Tony Harrison recently before I broke down the fight, and I noticed that he was getting hit even more overall with certain shots that I didn't see him get even hit with even in the Jamel Charlo fights. He was getting hit way, way, way too often in those fights. His defense was very bad, in my opinion, in both of those fights. He looked better in the Sergio Garcia fight because Sergio Garcia pretty much was a target waiting to be hit. But in that one fight against Padilla or whatever that one fighter was, he hit Tony Harrison way too many times. And Tony Harrison is lucky that he probably didn't get stopped in that fight. And Tim Zhu, like I said, he was the guy that was going to put on the pressure. He was going to be a guy on the note that was the undefeated fighter and was the more confident fighter coming in. And that's why I predicted Tony Harrison to win the fight. So we'll see overall what ends up happening with that. But like I said, Tim Zhu, in my opinion, was going to win the fight. And if you pick Tony Harrison to win the fight, I don't have a problem with it because... Tony Harrison, he did have certain things on the all that was going to give, you know, Tim Zhu potentially some big problems. And he did give certain problems to Tim Zhu, just not enough overall once again to really threaten him. And what Tony should have done in the fight is that he should have been trying to get out of Tim Zhu's range, use a lot of lateral movement, tie him up when it came down to it. You know, that's also another point that I really got to bring up as well. Because uh, <laughs> I see certain fighters all in all, uh, and Caleb Plant, this is going to be very interesting to see how he does against David Benavides as well. There are certain fighters all in all that just move around the ring, or they do this shoulder roll bullshit when it comes down to it, and they think they're Floyd Mayweather Jr., and they think that it's going to work uh, all in all. And I don't know if Tony Harrison necessarily uses the Philly shell. He appears overall to have more of a, I don't know if I'm going to say a super high guard, but he tends to keep both hands up you know, pretty evenly. When it comes down to it, you know, certain people, they just think overall that they can be Floyd Mayweather Jr. with this, you know, Philly shell or all in all that they can have a similar defensive system. When someone is pressuring you, you can't just move along the ropes constantly or you can't all in all just overall have a certain Philly shell or, you know, when it comes down to it, be in a certain defensive position and hope that your opponent doesn't hit you. You have to try and sometimes in exchange with them, you have to try and tie them up. You have to try and occupy the vacated space. You know, you can't just stand there and hope overall that keeping your hands up, you know, overall is just going to be good enough and continue staying up against the ropes. That was one of the major flaws that Caleb Plant had in the Canelo Alvarez fight. 
That's what I said after that fight. I had no idea what Caleb Plant was doing overall, just trying to stay up against the ropes. Like when he was trying to tie Canelo Alvarez up, in my opinion, he did it very poorly, you know, when it came down to it. And he's still an A-grade fighter, in my opinion. But we'll see how true of an A-grade fighter he still might debatably be after the David Benavidez fight, you know, when it comes down to it. But anyways, once again, good on Tim Zhu for winning the fight. He put on the type of pressure that I thought he was going to. I personally thought that he was even going to put on more pressure. I thought all in all that he could have had a little bit more of a body attack. But it is what it is. As for Tony Harrison... In my opinion, he did fight the wrong type of fight, but maybe he fought the fight all in all that he thought that he was going to have to in order to survive. Certain people always say that Tony Harrison isn't fighting the right type of fight. Well, maybe he is fighting the right type of fight for him because there are certain fighters to where people say, well, why is he fighting like that? Like Adrian Broner, a lot of people would always ask that. Why is Adrian Broner not letting his hands go? Why is he not doing this? Why is he not doing that? You know why the reason is? Because he doesn't have the ability. It just is what it is. Tony Harrison more than likely does not have the boxing ability that a lot of people believe that he has. It just is what it is. And I think that at times he shows very good boxing ability. But I think a big part of the reason why he had a better time against Jamel Charlo, for example, is because Jamel Charlo was mainly going to try and outbox you. And he tried to outbox Tony Harrison in the middle of the ring. And like Derek James overall said in the first fight that Jamel Charlo should have pressured him a little bit more. He should have tried to beat him up a little bit more. Because Tony Harrison does not deal with pressure well, either mentally or physically. It just is what it is. But anyways, overall, once again, good on Tim Zoo. That's pretty much, you know, the majority of what I have to say. Now, as for both fighters heading forward, unfortunately for Mr. Tony Harrison, I think it's about time that he hang him up. You know, he still had a decent career, a relatively short career, but still a decent career. He did become a champion. Not many fighters overall do become a champion, so he at least gets to say that. Uh, you know, when it came down to it, sure, his career maybe did not pan out as much as what he had liked, but he still overall became a decent fighter. He ended up beating Jamel Charlo, one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters uh, overall in the world, in many people's opinion. So Tony Harrison can at least relish in that. And in my opinion, he should go to training because uh, Tony Harrison, he's just taking way, way, way too much punishment. And I'm not even sure if Tony Harrison is 30 years old yet. Uh, Tony Harrison, in my opinion, it's time for him to hang the gloves up, at least in terms of professional boxing. I don't think all the know that he really is going to have much left. And if he takes much more punishment in terms of getting knocked out, he might end up with a severe case of CTE. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. But in terms of Tim Zhu, of course, the next fight for him more than likely is going to be that of the Jamel Charlo fight. Do I believe personally that he's going to beat that of Jamel Charlo? More than likely not. I don't think all the know that he has the same skill set that Jamel Charlo has. And I think that his power, I think that his ability, and I think that his jab, I think that it's going to be a little bit too much for that of Tim Zhu. And I think there's also going to be moments where Jamel Charlo, he hits Tim Zhu with something that's going to push Tim Zhu back. And I just don't know if Tim Zhu is the type of fighter to really fight very well on the back foot against a fighter like Jamel Charlo. I think in order for him to be mainly successful, that he has to be the pressure fighter. And I think that for Jamel Charlo, when it comes down to it, that he can handle a type of fighter like that he did against Brian Gastano. But what I will say is this, I give him a better chance than what I once upon a time did. So I'll give him that. You know, before, I thought maybe he was only going to have about a 10% chance. But right now, I would, I would give him about a 30% chance. I still don't believe that he's going to beat that of Jamel Charlo. And if the best version of Jamel Charlo shows up, I probably would more than likely favor him to knock Tim Zhu out within a later stoppage somewhere around round nine. But uh, let's just say this, if Tim Zhu did end up pulling off the upset... Would it be Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas or the big stuff set that I've ever seen? No, it, it, it wouldn't overall be the big stuff that I've ever seen. But, you know, we'll see. I still expect Jamel Chola to win, but we'll see what ends up happening. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for my fight analyzation. Very good on Tim Zhu. Very good performance. He even showed certain skill sets that I overall did not really know that he had, at least to that level or to that degree. So very good on him. Very great performance. As for Tony Harrison, he tried, of course, in my opinion... He did not fight the right type of fight. Uh, and in my opinion, more than likely, it's probably time for him to hang it up. Just is what it is. But we'll see what happens. But anyways, that's all about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.